they are currently at $478.99 a share may have moved up since that time since they're moving up and Yahoo analysts estimate that they can go up to $535.34 in the next 12 months hey guys after hunkering down during the winter and doing most of my videos outside, I'm out on the patio now. So, uh, but we have a few analysis to knock out today. And so, I want to start with a company that recently fell to their 52 week low, and that is United Health Group Incorporated health insurance and for those of you who follow my channel already you know that Humana is already on our watch list now we're adding United Health Group now you know I break down the stocks on my watch list for those who follow me into three tiers three star which is the most fundamentally sound two stars which is beneath that not as fundamentally sound and one star which is the least fundamentally sound but still fundamentally sound enough to make it on my watch list well united health group is a three star the most fundamentally sound and when i jump into the analysis for this company you see exactly why i say that they are currently at $478.99 a share may have moved up since that time since they're moving up and Yahoo analysts estimate that they can go up to $535.34 in the next 12 months so let's jump into the analysis on this company but before we do that first let's take a look at the um, one where this is picked from and a couple of other things i do on my channel so currently the stocks that i find fundamentally sound and they're at their annual low price I add to my watch list and every week when I see stocks on that watch list moving up I put them out on my YouTube channel in a this week stock winners also from the this week stock winners I pick out a this month's option picks as we know when it comes to stocks and options options are actually based on stocks but the percentages are much higher you can make two or three percent a day return on the stock if it's moving up you can make 20 or 30 percent a day on an option if it's moving up so just a couple of things to look forward to in the channel which is uncle Dwayne's watch list but having said that, let's jump over to this spreadsheet and take a look at this stock, United Health. Okay, guys, so now we're looking at the company we're looking into today, United Health Group Incorporated, ticker symbol UNH. Now, actually, I did the analysis on this company on Monday that was April 15th and when I did the analysis on this company I saw that they had an earnings report dropping on April 16th I did the analysis in time to buy it but like I tell you guys when earnings reports are coming up earnings reports are like going to a casino you can make a lot of money or you can lose a lot of money 
if the earnings report comes out and it's good, you can make a lot of money. If the earnings report comes out and it's bad, you can lose a lot of money. And there's no way to know how the earnings report is going to come out. Even if you can find out, maybe you know somebody who works for the company and they're going to give you access to the earnings report before it comes out publicly. That's insider trading and can put you in jail. So, I decided I'm going to let it go by. I'm just going to wait until afterwards and then I'll decide if I want to buy it. And as of the last few stocks, that has worked out for me. But in this case, when I analyzed United Health Group on Monday, it was $439 and 20 cents a share and then by Wednesday night it was four hundred and seventy eight dollars and ninety nine cents so obviously the earnings report came out good it really jumped up generally if I miss an opportunity it doesn't bother me much because I know I'm going to catch another one. But I got to admit, this one's a little under my skin. But having said that, I do have a call option on Humana, which is also in the health insurance, just like United Health. And Humana has moved up a little because of the steam of United Health, it seems. So I'm not completely suffering. I made some gain from Humana. But wow, if I would have had United Health. In any event, let's jump into this stock. So like I said, United Health is in health insurance. They're a three star. And if we want to look at the last few five years how they did as far as the stock in 2019 the low price for this stock was two hundred and one dollars and twenty six cents the high price two hundred and seventy eight dollars and twenty six cents that was a 38.26% gain over the year. In 2020, the low price was $183.93. The high price was $339.65. That was an 84.66% gain over the course of the year. In 2021, at the low price, they was $309.84. High price, they were $489.80. That's a 58.08% gain over the course of the year. In 2022, at the low price, they were $440.85. At the high price, they were $543.09. That is a 23.19% gain over the course of the year. And in 2023, they were at $442.73 at the low price, $548.91 at the high price. That is a 23.98% gain over the course of the year. Now, and this year at their low price, $439.20. The high price that Yahoo analysts estimate that they will move up to is $535.34. Now, bear in mind, that number is dynamic. If you go to Yahoo maybe two weeks from now, they may have a different number in there. 
but for what, whatever reasons they put it down in, they expected to move up to $535.34 by the end of the year. So having said that, let's take a look at this company's earnings per share. We see in 2019 it was 14.33, 2020 it was 16.03, 2021 it was 18.08, 2022 it was 21.18, and 2023 it was 23.86. Now, it's been increasing every year. However, for this year, it's projected at 16.38 by Yahoo Analysts. However, that number can go up, it can go down, or it may stay the same. We know that there's some things going on in the healthcare industry. They're not getting as much money this year. So that could be affected. That could be why the earnings per share is dropping. But in any event, we'll see if it stays the same, the same or if it moves up. But even at the earnings per share that it's at, they're projected by Yahoo analysts to go up to five hundred and thirty five dollars and thirty four cents now like i said the stock is at 478 and 99 cents or it may have moved up a little from that we already passed this earnings state and we spoke about what yahoo estimates expect them to move up to the current P.E. ratio is at 29.24, but like I said, when I caught it, it was $439.20, and the P.E. ratio was at 18.42, so it's moved up from there. Now the free cash flow yield, and we're going to look at the free cash flow a little later, is 4.61%. And we can set that. Let's take a look at our income statement. Let's look at the fundamentals for this stock. And we see that in 2019 this company made 242 million 100 242 billion 155 million dollars in total sales and revenue of that they retained 13 billion 839 million in net income after paying all expenses that was a 5.71 percent profit margin not exactly high um for many other companies we will be looking for something of 10 to preferably 20 percent but considering this is a health insurance company that spends a lot of money on people's health. I would say that's decent for a health insurance company. 2020, that was our COVID year. Sales and revenue, $257 billion, $141 million. After paying all expenses they re retained 15 billion 403 million in net income that was a 5.99 percent profit margin in 2021 notice their sales and revenue are going up every year 
sales and revenue, $287 billion, $597 million. And the net income, after paying all expenses, $20 billion, $120 million. That's a 6.21% profit margin. In 2023, sales and revenue was $371 billion, $622 million. And their net income was $22 billion, $381 million. That's a 6.02% profit margin. Now, if we jump down to look at their return on equity, we see that it was 22.90 in 2019, 22.54 in 2020, 23.03 in 2021, 24.70 in 2022, and 23.70 in 2023. So, the return on equity is in a decent area. And for the debt to equity, we like it to be under 200%. Only one year did it exceed that, 187.72%. In 2019, 188.74.74% in 2020, 182.77% in 2021, 201.66% in 2022, and 189.89% in 2023. So, having said that, Let's take a look at our balance sheet. Based on the debt to equity, the balance sheet should be decent. And actually, there is something I have a concern with on this balance sheet. And the concern is that we like to see our current assets exceeding or being more than our current liabilities for each year and our total assets exceeding our total liabilities for each year. In this case, the current liabilities are actually exceeding the current assets for all five years. However, the total assets are exceeding the total liabilities. And like I say, our debt to equity is not so bad, so I'll overlook that. And let's jump down. We see this company pays a dividend for each year. 2019, they paid 3932000000 billion in dividends. 2020, they paid $4,584,000,000 in dividends. 2021, they paid $5,280,000,000 in dividends. 2022, they paid five billion nine hundred and ninety one million in dividends and twenty twenty three they paid six billion seven hundred and sixty one million in dividends and we're gonna go through more of that when it comes down to free cash flow in any event 
when it comes to a company a public company on the stock market they can do two things well three things when it comes to shares of their own stock they can buy back shares of their own stock which we as investors love to see they can sell more shares of their own stock which we as investors hate to see or they can just do nothing don't buy back don't sell well in this case in all five years um, United Health bought back more shares of their own stock which we love to see they bought four billion four hundred and sixty three million worth in 2019 two billion eight hundred and ten million worth in 2020 three billion six hundred and forty five million worth in 2021 five billion seven hundred and forty seven million worth in 2022 and six billion six hundred and forty seven million worth in 2023 I'm not gonna go through the change in current debt in long term because we already dealt with that in the balance sheet but I'll look at the free cash flow now you, you a company will have net income that means on their income statement they make their sales and revenue for the year then they have the expenses net income is what's left over but free cash flow is what's left what's left over at the end of the year may not even be from what they made that year so we want to look at the free cash flow that this company had and in 2019 they had 16 billion 392 million in 2020 they had 20 billion 123 million in 2021 they had 19 billion 889 million in 2022 they had 23 billion 404 million and in 2023, they had 25,682,000,000. Million. Now, why do I consider the free cash flow so significant for a company that pays a dividend? Because the dividend actually comes from the free cash flow. And after paying their dividends, the free cash flow will let you know if they have enough to pay a dividend. So, in 2019, after paying their dividend, they still had 12 billion 460 million in free cash flow. In 2020, after paying their dividends, they still had fifteen billion five hundred and thirty nine million in free cash flow. In twenty twenty one, after paying the dividends, they still had fourteen billion six hundred and nine million in free cash flow. In twenty twenty two, they still had seventeen billion four hundred and thirteen million in free cash flow. And in twenty twenty three they still had 18921000000 in free cash flow. And that's significant because sometimes you'll see companies that are paying dividends just to attract people to buy their stock, but they don't have free cash flow to pay those dividends. So where are they getting the money from? Are they borrowing it? In any event, United Health is good in that regard. So, as we come to the end of this, we want to look at these statistics. 
and we see that the beta for this stock is 0 0.56. A beta of 1 means that the stock is, its movement is about the same as the market, as the general market. A beta of more than 1 means its movement, its volatility is more than the general market. And a beta of less than 1 means its movement is less than the general market. Well, this stock has a beta of 0 0.56. It's about a little more than a half than the market. It has a book value of $96.06. Now, I have a channel, a video on a channel of why I don't trust book value. Book value should tell you if this company was to suddenly close down, how much you'd be able to get for each share of stock. I feel that's not reliable. I put a video on the channel explaining why. But in any event, the book value is $96.06 with a PB ratio of 4.99. What I count on more than that is whether the company is selling more shares in stock or buying back more shares in stock. In any event, there are 921.93 million outstanding shares of this stock. The last dividend they paid was $1.88 a share, and their dividend yield is 1.71%. Now, of that 921, 0.93 million outstanding shares, 0.24% are owned by insiders. That means those who, are, who work in or are involved with the company. And 93.91 are owned by institutions, large banks, and so forth. Mr. John F. Rex, born 1962, is the president and chief financial officer of this company. He was appointed on April of 2024. And Sir Andrew Philip Whitty, born 1965, is the CEO and non-independent director. He was appointed on February of 2021. And United Health is in the healthcare plans industry, healthcare sector. So that's it for our analysis on United Health, guys. I look forward to speaking to you in the next video. Have a great day.